Hello and welcome to the Monday, August 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, when it comes to covert channels, there's uh, probably a no protocol that hasn't been attempted yet at some point to be used as a covert channel. I always say it's easy to find a covert channel if you know what to look for. The latest example is a command control communication that Xavier ran into in some malware that, uh, well, uh, may have been more intended sort of as a test. But what's sort of interesting, unique about this uh, malware is that it actually uses Postgres, the database for command and control. The attacker apparently set up a Postgres database and then the malware will basically just send SQL commands back to that database in order to exchange information or look for new commands. This could go undetected in a network that's using Postgres routinely. Of course, even if you do use Postgres routinely, this should still erase alerts because this traffic does not appear to be encrypted. And database traffic, SQL traffic should never really be sent in the clear. And of course, when you are looking for covert channels, definitely do not stop with signatures for known covert channels, but look for anomalies. And then we also got some tips for macOS users from Xavier when it comes to identifying the owner of network connections and in general, looking more in depth into network connections. Well, two commands here that you should keep in mind, the obvious and Pretty well known one, I think, is LSOF, typically used for files, but definitely can also be used for network connections. And then a second one that's not as well known, NetTop. NetTop, as the name sort of implies, is like a top for network connections, like the good old sort of command line top program. And NetTop will list all network connections, including associated processes, and it can be made to sort of continuously dump these network connections or periodically, depending on uh, what you prefer. And if you ever played with web applications, you probably ran into curl, the library and the command line tool to initiate HTTP connections. Daniel Stenberg, who is maintaining curl, has a posted a blog post, somewhat a rant, but I think uh, for a good uh, reason about some problems with the CVE system. Now we all use CVEs, of course, sort of as a source of for vulnerability identifiers. And with that, you often also get a CVSS score that should indicate the severity. If you remember just recently, a new version of the CVSS score system was actually released. But that new version actually doesn't sort of solve the fundamental problem that Daniel is addressing here. And that's that, well, uh, some CVE numbers should probably never have been assigned because they're not really about vulnerabilities. And he notes here one case in the curl library, but also that the CVSS rating is sometimes inflated. It's of course a difficult problem to solve. Daniel here is going at it with the very best intentions, but we have had, of course, vendors sometimes that try to downplay vulnerabilities. And it's sometimes not that easy, even though the CSS scoring system is pretty objective to really come up with a score that everybody can agree on. In part, it sort of does rely on, well, basically people playing nice, which of course is often not the case. But the end of it all is if you do see a CVSS score or a CVE, well, a double check, make sure it's real, make sure that the severity is appropriately uh, graded in the CVE report that you're reading. The National Vulnerability Database is often just copying them from people who report vulnerabilities or vendors. So they can be low or high either way. And uh, please, uh, if I ever make a mistake uh, with uh, CVEs or CVSS scores, uh, please uh, let me know. 
And it appears on Fridays a number of uh, Windows users had issues launching QuickBooks and a few other uh, software packages. The problem appears to have been that uh, Microsoft had revoked a certificate authority that was used uh, to sign this software. Interestingly enough, uh, about at the end of the day, the certificate had been restored by Microsoft. No details yet as to exactly what had happened here. Possible that the certificate uh, was sort of suspected of being used for suspicious uh, purposes. And then we also have yet again another malicious NPM package. Uh, this one is called emails-helper. Note the plural for email. And it comes with a number of command control channels that can be used either via HTTP or DNS to exfiltrate data. The package claims to be useful uh, to validate email addresses, certainly something that's hard to really get right. And that's why developers often are going for packages like this just by searching and then they may end up just accidentally with a malicious package uh, like emails helper. Well, that's it for today. Uh, just a quick sort of announcement here next week monday will be labor day in the united states i'll also be traveling so there will not be a podcast on a monday a week from today that's it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye